Pleasant good afternoon and welcome to our noonday prayer as we continue to give God thanks for his presence in our lives, of course, and the difference that presence makes. As we enter this week, we are mindful, of course, of our Independence Day that comes up in just a couple of days. And so we do want to continue to pray for our country. We're also mindful, of course, that today we celebrate the father of our nation, the Right Honorable George Cadle Price, and today is a, has been billed as a, a day to do something good for your country, service day for your country and for others. And so we hope that though it's a holiday, we will still take advantage of the opportunity to make a difference. And of course, as we will share briefly uh, today, for those of us um, who got up early, was, we were able to view the funeral service uh, of the late Her Majesty Queen Elizabeth II. And so, in a sense, we want to today give God thanks for those who have been example to us to emulate and to follow. I want to give God thanks for their lives and their witness to the gospel. Let us observe a moment of silent prayer, however, as we begin our noonday devotion. God's love has been shed abroad in our hearts through the Holy Spirit he has given us. O God, make speed to save us. O Lord, make haste to help us. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Our reading today comes from the Gospel of Luke chapter 8, and beginning to read at verse 16. Jesus said, No one after lighting a lamp hides it under a jar or puts it under a bed, but puts it on a lampstand so that those who enter may see the light. For nothing is hidden that will not be disclosed, nor is anything secret that will not become known come to light. Then pay attention to how you listen, for to those who have, more will be given, and from those who do not have, even what they seem to have will be taken away. The word of the Lord, thanks be to God. I am of the mind that many of you, like myself, got up early this morning to watch the funeral of the late Queen Elizabeth II. Or maybe I'm wrong. Maybe you didn't bother. You might catch news clips of it during the course of the day. It was a historic event, and one for which we would have been delighted to view for ourselves. As many opined during the course of the event, it's not likely 
that any of us currently alive will see something like this again, <laughs> ever. Modern technology, thanks to God, made it possible for us to view in more ways than one. No doubt the passing of the Queen after over 70 years of the throne marks the end of an era and therefore the commencement of a new phase in the life of the English monarchy and beyond. Interesting times lie ahead for King Charles III and the future of the Commonwealth as we have grown accustomed to it. And we, we see that, we see the trends, we, we hear the, the talk. Interesting times lie ahead for us as a nation as we prepare to celebrate 41 years of political independence, we have some important decisions to make. Conversations, agitations, and mobilizations around the matter of becoming a republic, likely in our near future. I'm almost pretty certain of that. I do hope and pray, however, that we are prepared to have an even more serious discourse about how we can better be governed. It's not just about getting rid of what we consider to be the past and something undesirable. It is about how do we respond to the present as we look forward to the future. How to attend to matters of importance when it comes to our country's further and future development. What we need to do to equip our people to be able to embrace that better future. These are the things we also need to talk about. Opportunities for education, development of requisite skills that are, are needed so that we can develop as a, as a nation, and an elevation of the quality and substance of our discourses are all on the table as we look for. We still need to, I believe, get to a place in our country where we can have more mature and substantial discourse about the issues that really matter to us, and not to allow just a few to dominate the conversation. These are some of the important things I believe as a nation we need to attend to as we approach celebration of our independence. So then, my sisters and brothers, pray we must for our leaders and people, but let us also work to realize our God-given potential destiny as a people and as a nation. Pray we will, act we must also do. Amen. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come. Your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial. Deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord, hear our prayer, and let our cry come to you. Grant us, Lord, not to be anxious about earthly things, but to love things heavenly. And even now, while we are placed among things that are passing away, to hold fast to those that shall endure. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Eternal God, our Heavenly Father, we bless your holy name for all that you have given us. We celebrate the life of the servant, Queen Elizabeth. We give you thanks for her love of family and her gift of friendship, for her devotion to her nation and the nations of the Commonwealth, for her grace, dignity, and courtesy, and for her generosity and love of life. We praise you for the courage that she showed in testing time, the depth of her Christian faith, and the 
witness she bore to it in word and deed. Accept our thanks and praise, we pray, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. And of course, we continue to give God thanks for this wonderful country we call our own as we celebrate our independence in a few days. Let us continue to pray for each other, those in leadership position, and all our people. That we will have the zeal and forbearance to continue to work for the good of all. We thank you for the exemplary individuals from the past who have helped to bring us to where we are. We think of the Right Honorable George Price, the Honorable Philip Olson, and others. We give you thanks for their witness to your love and your grace. Amen. My sisters and brothers, let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. And now may the Lord bless us and keep us. May the Lord make his face to shine upon us and be gracious to us. May the Lord lift up his countenance upon us, grant us his peace. And the peace of God which passes all understanding, keep our hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of his Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. The blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be with us this day and remain with us always. Thank you.